do you like to eat? Well, I know I do, uh, and a lot of men do. So we're going to be joined today by a special guest. We're going to have a chef with us, a professional chef. Stay tuned for uh, advice on making the best food possible right after this. Hey, everyone. We're excited that you're here joining us at The Catholic Gentleman. We are your co-hosts, Sam Guzman, and I'm John Heinen. If this is your first time joining us, we'd love it if you click subscribe on the podcast player of your choice. Or if you're on YouTube, click that subscribe button in that bell button so you can get notified every time we come out with one of these. If you have listened to us multiple times, I'd love to ask you a favor. If you're on podcast or now Spotify, if you could write us a review, that's awesome. If you like what we're doing, four or five stars, that would be just such a huge help for the show to expand and reach more men like you. And finally, we're always uh, grateful for our donors that help make this possible. If you have been inspired by the work we're doing, either here, our blog, our meme, Sam's book, whatever the case, please head over to patreon.com slash the Catholic gentleman and discern giving to us. We have a lot of different tiers. We're not asking for, um, you know, hundreds of dollars a month, but $5, $10 a month. All these things go a long way to helping us continue, grow and expand this mission. So I likewise am really excited. I love to eat. And we have got a professional Catholic chef. Well, he's a professional chef. He's also Catholic on the show, Jim Church. So Jim has over 29 years of food service experience with 19 of those years as a corporate executive chef in the food manufacturing industry. He is the culinary advisor to many high schools and colleges, culinary programs, as well as a culinary board member and content contrib contributor to Chef Magazine. In addition to his numerous awards, he, has a cert he is a certified executive chef and a certified culinary administrator with the American Culinary Federation. Jim has three children. He runs a number of Catholic charitable campaigns where he can donate his skills to help parishes, pregnancy centers, and uh, children in need. So Jim, we're just so grateful for your being here. How are you doing today? Awesome, thanks for having me. Yeah, we're really excited. So I do, we'll just start from the basics and I wanna know what got you in to cooking, why why food? Why becoming a, a culinary chef? And I uh, would just love to hear from the beginning. Well, you know, I guess it, it all takes place at grandma's uh, grandma's table, right? And, and eating as a kid and the smells of going to grandma's house. And then that kind of caught up with me in sixth grade uh, when I started taking uh, home ec classes and really feeling good about cooking and and like it came natural to me and I didn't, I didn't stress out like everybody else did. And, and my muffins turned out and then my brownies turned out and then everything that we did, it just kept going, going, going. So I was kind of on that path since sixth grade, um, through high school. Um, and I was captain of my football team and home ex student of the year. So, um, <laughs> it was, it's, it's been a, a fun journey. Um, you know, when, when most, um, you know, seniors are in, in, in high school they, and they get that senioritis at the end of the year, um, I was, you know, going to school at a trade school in the morning for three hours at a vocational center and then high school and then taking my classes at Schoolcraft College to enter the culinary program. So wow. it's very dedicated from from day one. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, a, a cooking football player. That's pretty awesome. Uh, yeah. Combination there. Yeah. Did you ever get hurt? You ever get teased about that? Oh, coaches. <laughs> yeah. They called me cream puff, powder puff, all that <laughs> kind of stuff. But, um, it, you know, I got into, you know, cooking and, and, you know, and serving others. Right. And that's yeah. where my joy came from. So I would, so I would make food the night before and then walk down senior hall in the morning and hand out you know, the different pastries or whatever. And, you know, everyone loved it. So when coaches got their, their sample of, of the goodies, uh, the joking stopped. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, then that, that makes, like, we all love to eat, right? Like, and everybody yep. just loves an amazing meal. It just is so satisfying, but it's also about more than just eating. It's like about being together and about so many different dimensions uh, oh, yeah. of the human experience. So it's not just about what's on the table. Uh, 
But um, I guess my question is too, like, you know, you found this gift and, and it seems like a gift is often what comes easily to us that other people find, find difficult. It's like, right. it's just in, and, and um, but how did you decide to like hone that and make it a career? Because, you know, a lot of people might say, well, I'll, I'll dabble in cooking or I'll experiment or it'll be a five fun side but side thing for me a hobby of some sort but to say like this is my, my career path like that's that's kind of another step so freshman year we did a um a field trip to a local culinary school and so the high school classes all got to come in and it was an open house and it was a recruiting thing for the college but that's where i was hooked i walked through i saw the white jackets i saw the hats I, the smells in the kitchen and the professionalism just absolutely floored me as a ninth grader. And that's when I was like, that's what I'm doing. And that's what I'm going after. So, you know, a lot of, especially high school kids, they don't know what they want to do. And they don't, you know, they don't know what path is in front of them. I was laser focused from ninth grade on. Oh, that's exciting. And so <clears throat> right after um, high school, you knew exactly just uh, you know, kind of like some priests that knew they wanted to jump into seminary, you knew exactly that you were just looking and had you been looking in high school? And if so, where did you end up going for, uh, for your, for your culinary um, degree? So it, it wasn't the place that we toured, <laughs> unfortunately. Okay. Um, Schoolcraft College in, in Michigan is the, the best culinary school in the Midwest. And at the time, it was run by all certified master chefs. So you could either go to the Culinary Institute of America in New York, and there's a fair amount of master chefs there, but he, but at Schoolcraft College there was, um, I think it was like seven to, or nine to one ratio of master chefs per student. So it was oh. it was very small classes, very intimate. Very intimate. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and it just to me it was it was an absolute no brainer. And uh, uh, very proud Schoolcraft alumni. Awesome and. And just in that continuation of that that craft, there, what what did you enjoy most? Uh, what what cooking did you enjoy? Do you enjoy most now? And, and was it kind of cultivated when you were in sixth grade, or was it cultivated now that you're in college, or or beyond that? Like, what style cooking um, do you do you enjoy the most? That is a great question, and it's definitely one that you kind of you know run right into in college because you can either go the the baking pastry road or you can do the hot foods road and okay. while i enjoy baking and pastries that's something i have to like stop reset get a mental um uh, preparation for to execute where hot foods i could just go in and just make it happen because baking and pastries is more of a science you really yeah. have to pay attention to your your measurements where I don't want to say I'm a fly by the seat of my pants kind of guy, but you know, hot foods is a little more forgiving. And I just, that the cooking methods and everything else for, for me, hot foods was the way to go. Awesome. What does that, what does that learning process look like? Because I mean, you know, uh, if you're going to be an engineer, it's probably gonna be a lot of like textbooks and computer programs, <laughs> but like, what does learning to be a chef look like? Uh, how do you what's that process so the process is very basic so you go to the the absolute basics of uh of of cooking and that's sanitation number one right so uh when you when you walk into a kitchen you know um you know sanitation and safety and sanitation is a, is a food situation you know for example um mm. you, you know that you don't put raw chicken over vegetables right yeah. so if any contaminants get down in the vegetables and it's just not a good scenario so learning those kind of things and learning knife safety learning how to um, operate in a kitchen professionally right and they move that along fairly quickly um, but then uh, knife cuts right you're spending you know cutting and chopping and cutting and chopping for about three weeks just trying to hone that skill a little bit so it looks somewhat professional you know your cubes have to be just absolutely you know um, right on your your juliennes, your your dices, your all of that. So you learn all of that, then you learn um, soup production, sauce production, and just kind of you know, just kind of um, moves moves on from there. Um, and then 
you know, all of those things are kind of low food cost items. So if you screw it up, you screw up your onion cuts or celery or whatever, it's going right in the stock anyways, no one ever knows. So, um, so, so that's how the, that, you know, progression goes. And then, then you get into, um, your basic cookery and your, your, um, uh, your, your methods of cooking, right. Grilling, sauteing, braising, baking, all of that kind of uh, stuff. And then you kind of learn how to master those a little bit. I shouldn't say master. You learn the fundamentals because mm. mm. you can never master something right in, in cooking. And even when you're a certified master chef, which is the highest level you can get, they say forever a student, like you okay. can never really give up that, that, that learning process. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. There's a, there's a couple, uh, well, first thing is, is what do you, you're talking about cutting and chopping and, you know, there's the different degrees of, of, of being a chef. Um, what do you least like doing in the kitchen? Is it the cleanup afterwards or what, 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 <laughs> what, what do you least like doing? You know, it's, it's all very important, right? Cause you yeah. got the way I do it is I clean before I cook. Like I get everything mm. off the countertops and make sure everything's sanitized. Um, and then you prepare and then you start, you start preparing. I've been kicked out of my kitchen uh, as a, as a young culinarian at home with my mom uh, because I didn't clean up and I made a mess and all of those kind of things. So, um, y- you know, scrubbing pots and that brings me back to my, my beginning days. And, and there is no chef that just says, well, I don't like doing this or I don't like doing that. Uh, cleaning fryers, I would say is probably not my favorite because <laughs> that is, pretty nasty Nasty but um yeah and and it humbles me you know with the fish fries that we do at the parish um you know kind of no matter how high you you get that will bring you right back down to um (laughs) you know your early days reminds you to be human yeah that's too fun it's it's a humbling experience so i like it a lot yeah yeah so and, and forgive my ignorance but i the the degrees of being a chef are a little mysterious to me. Okay. So, you know, you've got, you've got the, um, you know, person who just graduated from, from culinary school. Yep. Uh, and then you got like, you know, the head chef at the restaurant, you know, and then you've got like the certified master chef and then you've got all these different degrees, but like what really separates, you know, a, a decent chef you know to like a master chef like this guy is amazing like what what really what really changes changes that so usually if you graduate culinary school you're at what they call like the certified culinarian level and that's okay and all of these levels are all based by the american culinary federation they kind of set the standard in um identifying which level you're at um so certified culinarian, certified sous chef, certified chef de cuisine, um, certified executive chef and certified master. And all of them have uh, different levels. You have to be in the industry for so long. You have to have so many people working for you. Um, you need to have um, uh, uh, time in the, I already said time in the industry, um, people working for you and then education points. You know, you have to either, you know, graduate from a culinary school or, you know, have continuing education courses and things like that. Then you have to take the test, which is written. And then you also have to take a practical exam because there are a lot of people that are very good. uh, And and I realized this in culinary school that are like super book smart, right? Mm, Yeah. But when it comes time to execution, they just, you know, crash and burn. So um, the certification level says I am who I am. I have the credentials and I have the, the knowledge and the skill to possess, to possess that. Um, everyone says, oh, well, this is a, you know, so-and-so is a master chef, master chef. That term gets thrown out a lot, but a certified master chef is like the top, right? Um, and and these, these are amazing human beings. Um, they, they do a fantastic job, um, but that's not something that I'm going to obtain. Um, a lot of my peers, they, 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 they do that, but you really have to shut off your life for about five mm. years, three to five years. You got to shut off your life and you have to do nothing but study for the test. And that test is an eight day class, um, or eight day test about, you know, 12 to 14 hours a day. And it's, it's a grinder. Um, yeah. and you have, it's, I, I, I kind of equate it to like, um, hell week for the Navy SEALs, right? Yeah. I mean, it's the elite of the elite and, um, it, it's not a walk in the park. Um, 
but with with the family, I, I just like having that title just doesn't. It's, it's not that important to me to shut off my family for three, you know, three to five years. Just not going to happen. Yeah. No, absolutely. Well, and I, I can appreciate that very much. And uh, I've heard stories about sommeliers and people like that, you know, that that have to have to work to that to that degree. And yeah, it's a it's a, it's a commitment and it is a sacrifice. And yeah, and 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 what are you sacrificing? So, well, it's it's it sounds are incredibly impressive to me. And and so, you know, I kind of like to talk a little bit about um, the culture because you talked about how it starts at like grandma's table. And yep. I, you know, I completely agree with you. I think that's, that's, that's super exciting. However, today's lives have completely transformed, right? We've right. become, you know, we've got um, competing worldviews uh, from consumerism, which is just go, 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 you know, uh, this looks decadent, eat whatever you want, whenever you want, as fast as you want, Uber Eats, you know, send it to my phone. I don't ever wanna have to cook for myself, you know? And then you've got like nutritionism, right? Which is like, uh, and I've done the Whole30 diet a few times. And while I appreciate that, I really dislike sort of the, the philosophical ethos, if you will, because like there's no room for feasting within that um you know it, it has to be this to a t executed exactly and and if you cheat then you are a failure right and there's this sort of like guilt that's <laughs> that's put that's put on us um again though but going back to you know also our uh, not only our lifestyles but also you know it used to be you get together as a family on sunday and it was a full experience and then recipes were passed down from generation to generation and and if you wanted to, you know, cook a roast or a, uh, you know, a lasagna or something like that, you had to have a special, a specialist, somebody who knew how to make it and things like that. You weren't just going to the frozen freezer section and ordering a stuffers, you know, stofers and, and bringing right. that, bringing that in. And so what are, I guess are some of the pros and cons that you see about our modern lifestyles and things maybe that you would like to see us return to as, um, you know, this, this, first world country, I think that that has a lot of these uh, issues that I brought up. Yeah, not a fan of the Uber Eats and the the, the meal deliveries and, and go and ghost kitchen. And um, I believe in the the, the table, right? Yeah. Um, the, the hot food, the um, everything that goes along with, with, with breaking bread with, with family or friends or, or whatever the case may be, you can't do that by grabbing a sack of, of cold uh, hamburgers and, and fries, you know, um, is it good to do? Sometimes that's just what you have to do, right? You're, you're on the go, you're busy you're running kids, to, you know, different sports or whatever, and you got to eat on the go. Um, having that meal and be able to, you know, to unplug from your devices and your, your world, and and share that meal and that experience is very important. Um, it's very important in our house, and we try to do it as, as much as we can. Um, it's just and actually having your children uh, help with the meal, you know, and understand. Hey, how do you set a table? Um, you know, mom and dad made the made the meal. You guys are going to clean up, and how do you clean up? And um, you know, and all of that should be worked back into our lives. I feel. Um, Agreed. you know, a lot of these ghost kitchens that, uh, that are, you know, like from Uber eats that you just, you've never heard of these places. You punch them up on your, on your phone and they're just, you know, they're, they're in the back of a restaurant somewhere. Um, and you can order from them, you know, it's training people to not go out and be social and, and to not, um, share, um, in the community and, and we were kind of guilty of that ourselves with, uh, with our parish, with our, with our fish fry, you know, we were doing mm -hmm. drive through only and, you know, it was very, very popular during the pandemic, but then, you know, this year we did one drive through and really wasn't that well attended. We mm -hmm. opened up dine-in, dine-in last week and the place exploded. Yeah. So, you know, people are ready to get back and they're ready to, you know, to have those traditions back again. And yeah. it all revolves around the table. That's where it needs to be. Amen. Yeah, it just seems so significant to that, like the central act of, our, of Catholic worship is food, you know, or like around the table, like it's, it's about communion, it's about uh, being brought together as much as it is about nutrition. 
Um, and uh, there's, a, there's some beautiful reality there too. Um, so, you know, around your table, I'm, I'm interested uh when you do cook for your family i'm sure your wife yeah. appreciates appreciates uh having a chef for a husband oh yeah uh, but uh you know do, what what kind of, what are some of your favorite things to to cook uh, it doesn't have to be fancy but just anything you know it is i try to make it fancy and and sometimes it drives my family crazy right because i feel they deserve that experience and and they deserve that that food um you know, my, my crab cakes are, are one that, that my friends and family said they love the most. Um, I do a lot of different, uh, we like, we like to eat a lot of steak and a lot of protein. Mm. Um, uh, I'm trying to herb crusted, uh, turkey or pork medallions is a big one around the house. And these are all some of the things that we're going to be touching base on my, uh, um, homeschool connections classes. We're going to, you know, do some of these dishes and, and go through those. Um, but I can't just let it, just be normal and sometimes it drives my wife up the wall because i have to take it to the next level on pretty much everything <laughs> so um you know i, I try to do a, a fair amount of, of of cooking at home just because i get sick of you know constantly eating out um it used to be a special occasion you know growing up and you went out to eat and it was a big deal and now it's just like all right well where do you want to go now you know um yeah. so we, we try to do that as much as, as possible and and getting the kids to, to to help uh with the preparation of the meal you know hey can you peel the potatoes or can you do this and do that um definitely helps out um and i, and I think that's important too they have to see that it's just not just you know your parents are there to feed you but there's a lot that goes into it and appreciating that fact of you know it's a labor of love and there's a lot of special things that go into that meal that they need to pay attention to those little pieces and steps along the way. Yeah, and that that kind of leads to kind of a follow up question that that came to mind when you were talking, and that's, you know, in Catholic culture, we see that there was always this, you know, like I'm I'm thinking of old Europe, right? Like uh, <laughs> just as as kind of an a, an emblem of Catholic culture. I know it's not the only Catholic culture anymore, but. But at, at, at you know in old Europe you see like this quest to take it to the next level like you know I, I'm gonna maybe I'm a shoemaker but I'm not gonna be content to be a shoemaker I'm gonna be like an artist with shoes you know and like you're gonna do everything you know the the tanning the leather to like everything you do the stitching is just gonna be like top notch and like you see this with all of like European culture from like the walk watchmakers to the shoemakers to the you know the tailors to to like everything where there's like this culture of excellence around food and art what we just ordinary things of life like we're just going to make them all the best that they can possibly be and so i'm just wondering what your thoughts are on like where does this come from first of all and like what do you see uh, you know because there's there's people out there who have like a really negative view of life like mm -hmm. Well, we just need to be ascetics, you know, we, we just need to, you know, fast and like wear the ugliest clothes and like just, you know, just, you know, endure the suffering of life until we get to heaven. And people like that probably don't have a great appreciation for fine dining. It's like strictly practical, utilitarian, you know, just just do whatever the simplest and just get to heaven like that's your goal. But like cooking just seems to me like such a world affirming thing to do like we're not just going to eat we're going to eat really well <laughs> so like just just your thoughts on that culture of like we're not just you know doing the bare minimum here we're going above and beyond and how that kind of plays into your your view of cooking early in culinary school most of our um instructors were, were hunters right so they would say you know look we we, we harvested this animal to make something fantastic and we didn't do it so you could mess up on something or, or screw it up and then have to throw it in the trash. Mm -hmm. So just to take that that meat and just give it the simplest of, of preparation, is it doing that animal justice instead of making like the most amazing thing that you can and kind of celebrating that life from beginning to end, right? Um, 
that is what I think the difference is. I mean, you can make a steak or you can make a fantastic steak by paying attention to a couple little things and doing them well, right? So it's taking that that artisan part of it and um, and elevating it, but still simple, you know, just as you don't need a lot of sauces on a steak, you just have to cook it properly, season it properly, and boom, you have a masterpiece. It's oh. like it's rooted in gratitude, right? Like, Yes. Gratitude for yeah. the gifts of creation. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think with, you know, and John kind of said it earlier, just with like the commercialization, like everything's at our fingertips. Right. And there's so much of it and we don't have to hunt for it. Um, you know, we do have to be grateful for the things that we do have and, and celebrate it and, and make sure that you um, prepare it in the right way. Yeah. No, I think that's really exciting. And I see a lot of similarities, like you were saying um, about they were hunters. Yeah. And they, they took the time and they have that appreciation. I've been hunting myself many times and, and I do, you know, you find yourself thanking God for, you know, bringing you that animal and, and yeah. And then if you screw it up and it's the same thing with uh, carpentry, right. For anybody who knows if they go and get some sort of rosewood or some sort of wenge or some, some really fancy wood, you don't want to screw up that line because I mean, you measure three or four times just to make sure that you've got it right. And here on the podcast, we're always talking about calling men to be uh, producers and not just consumers, right? Where we, like, I know that I would greatly appreciate everything that you put at the table and, and I wish I was there now and we could, we could celebrate together. But um, what would, how do you make a great steak? I want to switch so that you can help, help our listeners, help me. Um, yeah, you just brought up you. a steak yeah. and, and I'd love to hear what are some tricks of the trade uh, from choosing the right meat to seasoning it to actually cooking it? Because I know there's, I mean, I've heard and tried everything from reverse sear to skillet, you know, to cast iron, to, to grilling and stuff. I want to hear your secrets. I'd love to hear those so that we can uh, hopefully learn from you. Well, it's, it starts with the piece of meat, right? So when you're, when you're at the grocery store, pay attention to the quality that you're buying, okay? So you have prime, which is the top, and then you have choice, which is, um, I would say that that's more of my everyday is I always go with choice. I try not to do like a select. Um, so those are the three that you're going to see in the store. Select's going to be not as much fat or marbling through it. And fat, fat's good and you have to have the right amount of it. Um, you don't want it, your steak to just be all red. You need some of that white, you know, going through there. Um, you know, pick the, pick the, the, the steak that you enjoy for years and years. It's been for me, a ribeye. I was a ribeye guy through and through probably had a thousand of them in my lifetime, probably way more than I should have. But now my, my tastes have kind of changed and I like more of the um, New York strip. Mm -hmm. So, you know, do you want a real thin piece of meat? You know, just check, make sure that you pay attention to what you're buying. Some people look at the price like, Oh, that looks, that's a good price for that. But it's like super thin. So I mean, you, you don't have a good opportunity to like really sear it good on both sides or it's going to be well done. Um, yeah. So what thickness would be good? And I want you to continue through with how to cook a full steak, but, but, so, you know, so I'm going to, so I'm going to pick like, you know, an inch and a half to two inch uh, uh, steak. Ooh, and, yeah. and, and again, you know, that's not just going to feed me. You can, you, you know, you could, you know, um, all right. So we'll, we'll keep going. Um, so, no, it's great. so you take that, you know, call it a, a pound or 18 ounces of New York strip. Let it sit on the counter for a couple hours. Let it get to room temperature. Mm -hmm. season, season it real well. Salt, pepper, a uh, little garlic, whatever you want to do on there. Um, if you're, you're good at the grill, um, you know, get your, your grill going really, really hot, about 500 degrees. And then, um, then sear it off or do it in, inside in a pan in a nice, uh, you know, cast iron skillet, get that pan rocking hot, put a little butter in there, get that going and then sear that steak. And how um, long, how long are we searing for? Cause I know that that can change it. Right. Um, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It, it can depend on, on the, on the thickness of your meat. Okay. So you can, you can sear it for about, you know, five to seven minutes and you get a nice crust on there. It's really looking for that nice crust. Um, I'm talking about a pan right now. Yeah. Okay. So, and then you flip it over and you get that nice sear in that, and then you finish it in the oven. So, mm. you know, you got about 14 minutes so far on, on, on your, on your steak. Um, again, it depends on your, on your thickness. And then you finish it in the oven for about 
another five to seven minutes. Then you pull it out and you let it sit. Um, so we're going to do a, we're going to do a quick little, quick little, yeah. uh, little test here. So everyone, so put your hand up. So, and then take your pinky and your thumb and put them together. Okay. Okay. And then, and then touch your, touch your, um, your thumb right here. That's a well done steak. That's how a well done steak should feel. Okay. Okay. Next one, medium well, medium, medium rare, and rare. Oh. Okay. So instead of, you know, when you're playing with the steaks and you're cutting it open to look and see where it's at, yeah. meanwhile, all of all all of all of the moisture in that steak is pouring out. So just doing a, a touch and really, and you know, you hit it like a little drum and then you can feel, oh man, you know, what's what's going on here with that steak. So, you know, each each oven is different each pan is different each grill is different so i don't hold me to those times i'm just going by um yeah you know, some of them are a lot a lot faster than that um and sorry when and we should just put this all in the show notes here but when you put it in the oven what's the temperature like i, I you know 350 degrees 350 okay thank degrees. you yeah yeah um, yeah so yeah and just and finish it off now on a grill okay so yeah. you've got you got your grill and it's nice and hot it's clean uh, what you would want to do is uh, get a get a rag with a little bit of olive oil on it, not a lot, just a little bit, or some pan spray. And spray those grates, mm. so that's going to help you keep it oiled and they called it seasoned. Um, so when you put that meat down, it's not going to stick to it, and it'll mm. give you a nice clean lines. When I've you set your, problem. yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you set your your meat down on 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 your grill, you don't want to just do it straight at at, at twelve o'clock. You want to do it at one o'clock. Okay. Okay. And then from one o'clock, you know, you let your, your steak sit there for two, three minutes and get that nice, uh, that nice mark. And now you turn, take your steak and move it to five o'clock. Okay. So now you'll have the perfect diamonds, right? So a lot of my there friends, when, when they'll, you know, they'll post a picture of their steak or something like that. And I'm like, bro, your, 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 your <laughs> diamond game is not on point. So, and I teach them the one o'clock, five o'clock method. So you just boom, and then boom, just put it right back down. So that yeah. gives you your, per, your perfect diamonds. Now, when you're when you're laying it set, do you shut the lid or leave it open? I usually leave it open because I'm running back and forth from my patio into the house doing something. So, um, but if you're standing right there, put the lid down. That'll that'll help move it along a little bit quicker. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. What do you prefer? Do you prefer grill or uh, or skillet method? You know, I have an old. I've been doing a lot of skillet lately. Um, I really okay. like that that real seared crusty steakhouse, um, um, flavor that, that you get from that. Um, I need to up my, my grilling game a little bit, but, um, <laughs> I just, sure have it's a, better a, than a, mine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm yeah. curious. So I, the other day I was like, I've been hearing this stuff about these like Wagyu steaks or whatever. And I saw some at Costco the other day and like this beautiful two pack, a hundred dollars. And I was like, whoa, I'm not spending a hundred dollars on two steaks. So, but, but let's say I just like won the lottery or something. Like, is it even worth it? Like, what is it about these steaks that they charge so much for? So it's, it's the marbling, it's the fat to, to lean muscle ratio. And it's mm -hmm. the way that the animal is, is fed. Right. So if you want to talk like Wagyu, um, overseas you know they are massaging that meat there's plenty of fat so there is a high fat ratio in this um in the animal so you see a lot of that marbling myself i'm not a fan um i like that midwest uh meat flavor corn grain fed um steak versus a, a wagyu it's going to have a, a different texture to it um it's, it's a lot more fatty. And if you don't, if you don't like that, that texture in your mouth of, of the fattiness, um, and it's just so expensive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But someone wants okay. to say, Hey, yeah, we're, we're, we're serving Wagyu. Try it, you know, see what you think. Yeah. Every bite is a dollar. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> or more <laughs> or more. Yeah. Uh, too fun. Um, uh, what is your favorite cuisine 
to cook? Or do you have, you've gone probably maybe through life cycle, life, you know, in your life, you've gone through cycles of, of cuisines that you, you know, prefer or desire cooking, but, but is there one specifically? And, and if so, um, why? I'd love to hear that. You know, there really isn't, it's, I get to travel all over this beautiful country of ours and I get to mm-hmm. see the different regional foods and I wouldn't say it's more of an international, I think it would be more of a, a regional, um, mm-hmm. you know, kind of, kind of, uh, feel. Um, and that's what I really enjoy about when I go somewhere is take me to what's the best around here and what's, you know, if it's in Portland, Maine, getting down on some lobster and mm-hmm. not just any lobster, but why this particular lobster over that. And I love to learn those little intricacies of, of each town. Um, when people come to Michigan, they want to know about the Coney, the Coney dog, right? And yeah. they want to know the Coney Island dog. And they want to know between uh, Lafayette and um, and uh, the American Coney Island, which are right next to each other. They're like the staples. It's kind of like Pat and Gino's in, in, in Philly with the Philly cheesesteaks. Yeah. So learning those kind of things and, um, you know, and, and as, as you eat so much, you just kind of like, ah, I'm not sick of that. I'm sick of this. I'm like, I don't want steak anymore. You know what I want? I want a low country, uh, a low country dinner. I want to have some shrimp and grits or something like that. Um, I really can't say that I have a favorite. Um, I, I like to keep it, um, you know, kind of diverse and, and constantly moving. Cool. Constantly learning. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I'll never forget uh, a meal I had in New Orleans or New Orleans, yeah. or whatever you want to say. <laughs> But, but, uh, oh my goodness, that, that etouffee, like, just like, oh, yeah. blows your mind. Like it just, <laughs> and of course the atmosphere and just, just everything about it just makes it enhances it that much more. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a great and food town. So I guess my last question is, is there some secret that can like make any meal better? Like, you know, just add butter or something. You know, just something I was just going to say butter. <laughs> okay. Okay. Butter. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, and John kind of mentioned earlier about the commercialization and the media and the hype over certain fads and diets and things like that. Um, sticking with real food is the way you want to go. And even when you start to get into diets and things like that, you know, Real protein, real, real dairy, um, in moderation, <laughs> you know, um, but you can't go wrong with, with butter. Yeah, you really can't. Okay. And cultured, right. and cultured butter and All cultured right. butter. If you've never okay. had a cultured butter with sea salt, you really need to check out the Vermont creamery. That's my favorite. It is it's amazing. It's got sea salt in it. When you, when you cut through it, you can, you can feel it cutting through the salt crystals, put that on a, on a warm roll. That's all you'll need. That's amazing. Yeah, it does. Uh, um, I can say I'm I haven't so tried that. Right so. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> uh, me too. So, um, I wanted to shift just a little bit to um, your faith, your Catholic faith, right? So, like, I know that um, your know, faith uh, in Catholicism, uh, food is is like it. It's written within our liturgy. It's written within our faith, right? Um, uh, we've got the fall of man occurred through you know the eating of an apple, and then we we have you know the 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 wedding feast or the lamb supper, you know, in Revelation is is our is our ultimate home, and and then the Eucharist, you know, at uh, at mass and at the table. How has your faith life? Um, uh, helped you or guided you in um, in in your career, and I, I know you mentioned early on that you kind of you alluded to having a servant's heart that you really you know enjoy serving and helping others. And I'd like to hear a little bit more about that from uh, from your perspective, um, yeah, personally. You know, when I was an early culinarian, um, you, you help out other chefs, right, and you you want to learn from them. And there were, there was a, a Catholic chef. Well, I didn't know he was Catholic. He said, Hey, can you, can you, um, can you help out chef Pete Veach? And I'm like, yeah, like this guy is awesome. And I'm like, yeah. And do I need to go to his restaurant? No, no, no. Um, it's at his church. <laughs> he needs help with the, with the parish festival. And I'm like, okay. So I went and that's, you know, you, you see 
the community, the food, the the religion a- aspect of, of everything that was going on there um, really opened my eyes, you know, as a as a young culinarian and um, trying to continue to show um, the people around you how you feel about them. And to mm-hmm. me, that's that's through that's through food, right? And and making that experience, whether it be you know, the fish fry or the dad's club, I, I, I put on this amazing um, welcome back dinner and it's a welcome new dads into the school. And it's, I mean, it's a huge feast. Um, we, yeah. we do some amazing things and, and, and hook them in that way um, into, into our community. Like what, what, what's, what's a, what's a huge feast? Yeah. What does that look like? Cause also feasting and fasting is a real important part of the faith, but, but yeah. uh you know, Sam and I are both really hungry right now. So let's continue on that track and let us know what is, what does a large the, feast look like from your perspective? The the first meeting I went to, um, there was just some Buffalo wild wings out, out on a table. Right. Okay. And it was great, but I'm like, mm, we can do better than this. So yeah. then that evolved to, um, a, a lobster, a lobster, uh, salad and crab cakes and, um, wow, what else did we do? We did a whole bunch of other different entrees and, um, and, and that's what we serve every time. Like it's, it's a buffet and I have a bunch of dads that all help me, um, prepare this meal. And we started our, our culinary, uh, we, we call it the culinary crew mm-hmm. and they're, you know, um, secret service agents, GM executives, lawyers, doctors are all a part of this crew because they enjoy giving back and, and, and doing it through, through food. And Mm -hmm. it it just, there's something very special about that. Um, You know, looking out and seeing you're making people happy, um, you know, through the food. Now that's the feast part of it. Now all of us are are getting into inter intermittent fasting. So now we're on the fasting side of it too. Um, Mm -hmm. So so yeah, did, did I answer your question? I don't know. I sometimes yeah, no, and I shifted the question. So yeah. yeah, your your faith journey is is in how that's continually helping you. And I and I suppose today that's it. You're getting you're able to get involved within uh, with this community and 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 being able to provide that on a regular basis. And um, I guess you know I don't want to put words in your mouth. So anything else that yeah. uh, you know about your faith that inspires you? Well, and the, and the other thing is is you know being a being a leader in the industry. Um, you know, and, and having those beliefs. And when you see someone in our industry kind of stray off that path a little bit, kind of help them, you know, get back on the path. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of us that, that, that do that as well. I guess one of my final questions is, uh, I would like to um, encourage our listeners, if you don't already, to, to start cooking. And, and what what do they need and maybe what cuisines or what uh, things would you encourage them to start with? Or maybe what recipe books or things like that, like, um, you know, speak to the ignorant that family lived a life of eating out all the time or, you know, t- TV dinners and and every once in a while mom would make, you know, spaghetti and it would be amazing. But, but apart from that, you know, they've fallen into this fast paced culture where they work 10 hours a day and they're striving to, you know, work their self up the ladder, et cetera, but they need to stop and unplug, right? We're huge on that here at the Catholic gentleman as part of being a, you know, a, a full man pursuing holiness. And so yeah. what would you suggest to start and what are some, you know, just kind of like a checklist of items that men could um, take home and, uh, you know, and starting tomorrow, you know, maybe uh, change the culture within their family and, and experience that community uh, and, you know, through food at the table. So John, very simple, a sharp knife. Okay. No, seriously. Like, and yeah. having a, a good sharp knife okay. is going, is going to, is going to put you on the path of, of cutting and then learning knives and knife skills. Mm. No matter what you want to cook, no matter what you want to do, you need to be able to, um, they, they call it mise en place, everything in its place. And, and, and when you see cooking shows, everyone's got their little bowls with all the ingredients in it. That's what that's mise en place. Mm. Getting all of your ingredients ready in a quickly, timely fashion. That's why a lot of people won't cook anymore because it's like, oh, I got to chop this. I got to chop that. And man, that's just, it's too much. If you get the knife skills down, have a sharp knife, cut the vegetables, the meats and prepare everything in a timely fashion. That's going to change the whole trajectory of everything that you do. Wow. It's not the, it's not the books. It's something as simple as, you know what? I have a knife that feels um, 
comfortable in my hands and it, it's sharp and I can do this with ease, that's going to set you head and shoulders above anything else. That's exciting. It's kind of like the treadmill when you're wanting to work out, you buy a new treadmill, you buy a new something, right? And yeah. that, uh, you know, that that sets you on the right path because it gets you excited. And so a, a, a good sharp knife and obviously knife skills is, um, yeah. is, is your suggestion for getting started. I wasn't expecting that. So yeah, and that's and that's all going to be a part of the class that I'm going to be teaching on the homeschool connection is that, you know, intro to culinary 101. And um, you know, in learning those, those, those knife cuts. So these, um, these, these kids can, can learn those basics and then their parents can watch too. Right. And, yeah. and, and learn that to, together. And then that will, will make everything quicker and faster and a lot easier in the kitchen. Oh, um, that's exciting. And, and then learning those other disciplines will, will all just fall in line. No, that's uh, great. I can currently cook a box of Mac and cheese. Uh, so I really <laughs> yeah. need to up, up my game. No, actually I love grilling. <laughs> <laughs> grilling and just like cooking cooking meats is like one of my favorite things to do but um but i do need to, uh, to get more comfortable in the kitchen with some other stuff so I, i'll start there i'll start yeah. with uh, my 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 knife skills um which i'm sure my boys will love it's just something about boys and blades they're just like like no oh, yeah. son you can't play with the butcher knife you know like, <laughs> uh, but but anyway i just I, I i've learned so much from this and i really appreciate uh everything you've shared jim it's been it's been a real pleasure yeah thanks um, it's a it's a lot to to take in there's so many questions in that so if we got to do a part two let's do a part two <laughs> yeah, yeah that sounds awesome. good yeah and so you mentioned the homeschool connections and i know for our listeners i mean i actually wasn't thinking about this until you brought it up but i do know um adults go to homeschool connections and take their their classes in addition to um you know high schoolers and uh and younger and so um two things the first thing is when does that class uh start has it already started and then the second thing is is where else can men go to learn more about you jim or um you know places that you would uh suggest they go that we can put them in uh the show notes if any so so the the class is going to be starting um uh, in the fall i believe it's in september um, right. we we just kicked out the 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 course kind of um you know it's gonna be a 12 week week course on fridays um you know and building out um, the, the class, um, or, you know, each, each week's, uh, curriculum, it's kind of exciting. Um, you know, it's gonna be drinking from the fire hose. I'm going to try and pare that back a little bit. Um, because this is really going to be an accelerated, like home ec class that's mm -hmm. fun and, and exciting. Um, but taking that act out of it and being more culinary based, um, as far as learning, um, you know, I don't, I don't have any, you know, like a, a web page or anything like that yet, but, um, you know, the best way to, to link in with me and, and follow me is on LinkedIn. Um, you know, I post a lot of the different things that I, that I cook and, and experiences and, and travel around the country and stuff. Um, I, I do it on, on LinkedIn. Wonderful. Well, we'll get that. I'll also um, probably tag to Homeschool Connections in some way, shape or form in the show notes. But Jim, we're just so grateful uh, that you would join us. And yeah, and like you said, uh, it, it was a lot. And uh, I would encourage our <laughs> listeners, if, if you're listening and you have a lot of questions uh, for Jim, uh, put them in the comments or shoot us an email at info at catholicgentleman.com because, you know, Sam and I are always interested and open to follow ups and things like that. And we want to hear from you guys. So anyways, yeah, and yeah. And if, and if you're, you know, if your listeners say, Hey, we would love to learn about this and, you know, or whatever, whatever subject they, they want to learn about. That's the cool thing about uh, homeschool connections is we're going to be doing not just a 12 week class. We're going to be just, I'm going to be releasing and shooting videos on certain classes and then being able to put that out. So um, whether it be like ooey, ooey gooey mac and mac and cheese or or um, uh, or grilled cheese that you know these kids can start to put together that are on trend and flavors that they would see out in restaurants they could do at home, um, you know we're gonna we're gonna start putting those things together. Awesome, I like it. Well, Jim, God bless you. I just really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us and our listeners and uh, joining yeah, us thanks today. For, thanks for having me, guys. All I'm right. gonna go eat now. So. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Well, as we end every episode, be a man, be a saint. <laughs>